Oysters have been harvested in the Chesapeake Bay region for centuries. Native Indian tribes gathered them by hand and with long-handled rakes. As Europeans immigrated and moved onto the lands around the bay, and demand for oysters increased, tonging from boats was developed to get to the oysters in 10 to 20 feet of water. And then in 1854, dredging came to the bay from New England, making possible deeper and faster harvesting. Dredging by Chesapeake watermen hadn't changed much in over a century when this film was shot for the port that built a city in 1956. The show's original script follows these oystermen, telling us that a day on a skipjack begins an hour before dawn. Dredging begins at sunup, so crews are aboard the boats early to go over the housers, the halyard ropes, and check the condition of the boat. They are ready when the captain arrives so they can sail without delay. A yawl or motorboat is permitted to assist the skipjack away from its slip and out to the dredging site. Motors are not allowed during dredging. Too many oysters would be harvested in the season if motorboats were used with the big dredge baskets, which consist of a metal frame with a chain basket and metal teeth that pull up the oysters as the dredge is pulled across the floor of the bay. Once the boat is on its dredging site, the sails are hoisted into position and the motor is cut. Some of the sails rise to 60 feet. Dredge boats cannot operate in tonging waters and vice versa. The tonger must stay in his own territory. There are fewer oysters in dredge waters than tonging. In the Choptank River where these scenes were filmed, there is a line a little more than eight miles long dividing the tonger's oyster beds from those of the dredgers. The division is rigid and the police boats and planes of the tidewater fisheries strictly enforce the rules. The dredging season lasts four months, from November 1st to March 15th. On a good day, a skipjack picks up 75 to 100 bushels of oysters. At four to four and a half dollars a bushel, the boat makes about $400 a day. But then there are many other days when they collect less than 20 bushels. An oysterman was quoted that, out here you've got to learn to stand the cold and to hold your footing on an icy deck. You see, we have to stay in the trough of the waves because we sail across wind. Water sloshes on deck and freezes. It takes real skill to control the boat while the heavy dredges are dragging along the bottom or are being hoisted aboard laden with oysters. The captain keeps one third of the pay of the catch while the rest is divided up among the other crew members after the cost of the food and immediate expenses are taken out. Tonging is the other style of harvesting oysters and is done from many styles and sizes of motor propelled craft based on the captain's preferences. They operate in the richest oyster grounds because tonging is much slower and more backbreaking than dredging. Tongs come in many sizes. The strongest men use the heaviest and longest poles. Because any type of motorboat can be used in tonging, women have also become interested in oystering. Expert shuckers like these at Christie's are part of Maryland's oyster tradition. Many of these people grew up in the business learning how to utilize the Chesapeake Stabber shucking knife and how to sort out the oysters into three sizes. Standards are the smallest, selects are medium, and counts are the largest. Each shucker does his own grading and is paid for each gallon shucked. Expert shuckers turn out 18 to 20 gallons per day. The seafood packing industry relies on tin cans for its processing to transport their products into the rest of Maryland, nearby states, and to foreign shores. During the 1849 gold rush, canned food was delivered to California around South America's dangerous Cape Horn on Baltimore's famous clipper ships. This building that houses the Baltimore Museum of Industry was originally built and operated as an oyster cannery.